Hello guys, today is uh, February the 29th and I'm um, going to do an update on our bell grazing project that we're doing with uh, University of Kentucky. Uh, I'm working with uh, Greg Hallich and also involved I think in the NRCS project. Um, in our, NRCS is involved in that as well. So we want to kind of give you an update uh, showing you uh, year two. We had started this project last year. Um, actually the very first video we had done last year and the reason I started the videos on YouTube um, was to kind of showcase the bell grazing project and uh, I'll show you kind of how things are set up and what things look like in year two. Okay, so this is the field that we're doing our bell grazing. Um, you can kind of see there's a fence line that goes straight toward that uh, sycamore tree that kind of divides the field in half. So on the left side over here, last year, we did uh, our high density bell grazing, which was um, eight hay rolls per acre. And then on the right side where you see bells here this year, um, last year we did a low density, which was um, four rolls, hay rolls per acre. Um, this year on the back half, we're doing another four hay rolls per acre. But then to my right, this is gonna be last year, we did four hay rolls per acre in this area, but this year we are not going to feed any hay there. Um, so Greg uh, Halich has been coming in and taking soil samples before we started, also taking soil samples after, and we're comparing. Um, he, he is doing research to see what kind of changes, if any, we're seeing in the pasture. So I'll walk through um, the high density area from last year first. So this is the area where we had fed hay last year in the high density. Um, you can see here's where a hay roll was fed last year. You know, there's still some hay that needs to break down. It's still decomposing. Um, we did not feed hay this year in this area. There are some things wanting to germinate. I'm not exactly sure what that is, what kind of plant that is. Um, Again, we did not put hay on this part of the of the field this year, but we did strip graze it. So the creek, which is the water source in our back, in the background uh, where the trees are, that's our water source. So we started in the back of this field on this side and we worked our way up toward me. Um, we actually grazed this area um, up until February the 13th. Um, so we did not start using the bell grazing until right around February the 13th uh, this year. So again, just from the strip grazing, um, you can see there is, you know, manure that's been laid down on the pasture. Again, there's another area that where a hay roll was fed last year. You can see virtually no mud. Um, the pasture held up really well. We were able to graze through a week of below freezing weather and a little bit of snow. I posted a video about that roughly a month ago. Um, again, and we're destocked here. So last year we had about 23 dry cows. This year we actually only have about 16 dry cows. Um, some of the cows calved late and had to be transitioned into a fall calving herd. Um, but again, even though we are destocked, um, you know, we, we've been able to not have to feed hardly any hay this year. So the first hay rolls we fed were in March, uh, sorry, uh, February the 13th. And I'll show you where, what that looks like. So here's the back part of our bell grazing area this year. Uh, we're giving them two rolls at a time. So this is the next section they're getting ready to go on where the two rolls are already placed out. Um, there's an electric fence uh, on this side of the cows. Um, they've eaten most of the hay we had given them, and I think we're actually due to move them tomorrow. Um, so when we move them, we will take this fence down. They'll be able to access the hay rolls. Our next fence is here, so they can only get to the two. And then, so when we move them into these hay rolls, They've already got a back fence here. And then the next section of hay rolls, we will put up a fence behind them. That way our next back fence will be set. 
Um, this fence is on a reel, so we basically reel it up, take the post up, and then set up the next section. And I'll walk to the back and kind of show you what things look like. Okay, so here's our cattle. These are our registered red Angus cows. The two black ones have a little bit of Simmental, they're Sim Angus. Um, I think you can probably tell they've held their body condition well on just grass. Um, we've kind of selected genetics that'll work on a just grass uh, environment. Um, they do have stockpile mixed in with the uh, hay uh, that they can graze. So again, this is a hay roll. They obviously are just finishing eating. You can see quite a bit of manure and feces. That's, or, I'm sorry, manure and urine that they've uh, deposited on the field to help fertilize it. The other hay roll they just finished eating is here. Um, we did get probably at least an, in an inch of rain, maybe more. Um, so you can see virtually no mud. There is a little bit of mud here around the edge of where they ate the hay roll, but virtually no mud. Um, cows are all in pretty good body condition. This one's really fat. They should be uh, calf, starting to calve in about three weeks. So this is what our stockpile looks like before we move them into the next section. Again, not, not great quality. There's a little bit of green uh, fescue in there, but a lot of dead grass. Um, it looks like we may have an early spring, so the grass is actually starting to green up some. So the goal of this project is to kind of show people what can be done with bell grazing. Um, you know, I think the research itself is focused on changes in soil samples. I believe they're also going to look during the growing season at like forage quality and some forage testing. Um, my experience with bell grazing is that it does work well. Um, and you can dramatically reduce your feed cost with strip grazing combined with bell grazing. So as I mentioned this year, we're de-stocked here. We only have 16 head here, but it looks like as of right now, we're probably only gonna feed about 16 hay rolls. So that's only um, one roll per head to get them through the winter. So our feed cost over the winter is dramatically less with bell grazing and because we don't have a high stocking rate on this farm. Um, I am planning to get my cattle numbers up here. They probably should be in the mid twenties is kind of where I'd like to be. Um, but it takes some time to get there. Um, but again, you know, the cattle look good. You have to have, um, you know, the right kind of cattle that can handle this. Um, and, but you can dramatically reduce your feed cost over the winter. Um, limiting access to how much pasture they can get at one time is going to extend the grazing season. So by strip grazing and only give them a certain area of pasture to graze, you're going to dramatically increase the 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 duration that you're that they can graze pasture. Um, so it looks like we've got one, two, three, about three or four more um, sections that they'll go through. So about eight hay rolls left. Um, so if they're going two hay rolls are lasting roughly five days. So that's five, 10, 15, 20. So we've got roughly another 20 days of, of hay or, or hay and grazing combination. Um, that'll get us to around March the 20th. And by that point, um, I think we probably can stop feeding hay. Uh, so again, this is done on a small scale here, um, so to speak, but, but it can be done on a larger scale. Um, but if you guys, you know, hopefully this helps answer any questions that you have and kind of show you what things look like. Um, and, and, you know, it works out well. We don't own this farm, so I don't have a tractor here over the winter. Um, and we can come out every roughly four to six days and rotate cows. Um, and it's a low, low time commitment as well. Um, but thank you all. Hope you all um, enjoyed seeing this. Hopefully it gives you a little more insight what things look like 
a year after um, our, our bell grazing on year two, I should say, of our bell grazing project. And uh, thank you all, and I hope you all have a good day.